On Saturdays, I like to keep it pretty low key. <laughs> Grab a cup of coffee, oh, maybe exercise, and then maybe really stretch myself and go on a date. Hi, I'm Oparna. Global warming, climate change, that one polar bear floating on an ice cap. We've all heard and seen these things, but how will they affect us directly? I do know that most of the scientific community agrees that the Earth is on a trajectory to warm up anywhere between 2 and 4 degrees Celsius in the next 70 years. But what will living in a world that is 4 degrees Celsius hotter actually mean for us? Will it be spring break forever? Hashtag YOLO, hashtag best life. I'm not even prepared for that. But to truly answer this question, I brought together a team of experts that will help us see what it will be like to live in a world that is four degrees Celsius hotter. Inez Fung is a researcher studying the effects of climate change and Janet George is chief data officer at Western Digital. So what is a 4C world? I feel like a lot of people would hear that will be four degrees hotter and they'll be like, that's, that's not that much hotter. Well, when we think about a few degrees, it's globally average. During the Ice Age, it was only 4C colder, okay? And sea level was dramatically lower. So how is data changing the game for climate science? We have tremendous data at, in our hands. We have deep insights from this data. We're able to analyze at scale that we've never been able to do before. We're able to build machine learning models that tell us predictive analytics around um, what we can see that impacts climate change. Mm -hmm. A lot of irreversible changes are going to happen to, to the world. And heat waves will be very long, and together with the heat waves, we have very long drought. And then when it rains, the rain is going to be more intense. and maybe different duration. And then what we also see is sea level rising. And there will be tremendous inundation for the coastal region. You know, this is why people why don't so care about climate that's change. Why action it's a lot of talking but and not a lot of what's in it for me. Mass, mass extinction of humans on because your skin is just melting. Idea. So, I'm going to be honest. You said a lot of important stuff, but it's all pretty terrible sounding. And at some points I had to tune out just to stay positive. You need to talk to people in a way that they can really, you know, they can be like, well, what would be different for me? Like, you got to hit them where it hurts. Maybe if you were like, I'm going to put you in a 4 world and take away your weekend. An experiment? Yeah, an experiment, like do an experiment. I love experiments. Okay, well, I like your positive attitude. I think if we showed me going through my Saturday and everything's the same except it's a 4 world, now that I would watch. Ready when you are. Hmm. Nothing better than waking up to a room full yeah. of strangers. You can okay. talk to Janet and Inez through there. Can you hear us? Someone's talking to me. Hi. Good morning. Congratulations. Hi. You don't live near the coast and your home is still here. Oh, no. I've always said that nature is smarter than we are. In a 4C world, there will be surprises, and there will be surprises that we really cannot anticipate. Ah! Ah! Oh! <laughs> oh! Get him up! Get him up there! Ah! No! No! Don't go under the bed! Don't go under the bed! <laughs> Close oh, me out! It's not appropriate. I just met you. Please stop. I actually feel for her. <laughs> Hello, Janet, Inez. Cockroaches? Wait, what does that have to do with the 4C world? Insect behavior is keenly sensitive to temperature fluctuations. Data has also shown a strong correlation between rising temperatures, DNA-based substitution, and DNA duplication. Why are you telling me this? Are you trying to help? It doesn't seem like you're helping. So with the rising temperatures, and as these genetics become diverse, and what we're going to see is new behaviors and new adaptations emerging from these insects that we didn't actually predict no. or know about. Please stay down there. The whole food chain, the whole biological system is changing in a way that we cannot predict because we have no data for that future system. Where have you been? Over here? Get these guys first. Which species will thrive? 
I cannot really tell you, but given the long history of cockroaches, I think that they would do well. This guy's a lone wolf. I don't trust him. Okay, thank you for your time. Please never come back. Don't mind if I do, even though I'm fairly certain this is a trap. She's addicted to coffee, and I think she has to realize that in a 4 c world, coffee is going to be very precious. What could go wrong with coffee? Oh, no! <laughs> that was really rude and nasty. <laughs> Why? Why did you do that? We have heard some people say that, oh, climate change, we can just move the coffee uphill where it is cooler. It's not that easy. As data measurement and analysis capabilities have improved, we are gaining a much deeper understanding of what the issues are, the mechanisms that we can incorporate into the models. We face the danger of the native Arabica plant going extinct. And those diversity banks are very key for studying long-term sustainability to cultivate new crop. Thank you. This makes up for earlier. Why? We're really racing against the clock, and there's going to be a lot of trial and error while we're experimenting and figuring out where to go and where to plant. Here's the good news. Data is actually helping us solve the problem. For example, the Inter-American Development Bank released the genome of Arabica coffee plant in 2014 to the public domain. Now with crowdsourcing, you have this concept of distributed brain. And so, you know, scientists all over the world that has any knowledge or has data around coffee can now input this into the system. This actually helps us to understand how coffee plants like Arabica can survive in warmer temperatures. Oh, exercise. Haven't done this in a while. You know what? It's a beautiful day, and what is the worst thing you guys can do to me out here? Touche. I stand corrected. We've outfitted you with enough insulation to bring your body temperature up so that you can feel what it is like in a 4C environment. I do feel very cocooned. CO2 is trapping the heat that otherwise would have escaped to space. So the Earth can't breathe, cannot ventilate. So it is like the Earth is heating up. And we say, here's another layer of blanket. Put on another sweater. Apana, how are you feeling? Hey, this actually isn't that bad. No, I don't like that. We want to make sure that we simulate difficult breathing conditions for her in a 4C world. In a 4C world, wildfires could last a lot longer. In California alone, we've seen it affect the air quality, not just for a single day, but we've seen the toxic air quality continue and be prolonged for weeks. Climate change is not just about temperature change. Climate change is a whole slew of things happening all together. For example, warmer air can hold more water vapor than cooler air. When it rains, it's going to be more intense. And in places that precipitation may be declining, there may be flash floods because we can have intense downpours. Oh. <laughs> There's going to be a whole host of outcomes, and because the world is totally interconnected, we cannot be business as usual. Oh, that is so nice. Sorry, time's up. Ah, are you kidding me? In a 4C world, there will be severe water shortages, and there's no such thing as long showers. I really hate you guys. Is it time for a drink? No, 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 no. This is the restaurant that simulates a 4C world, and we've set you up on a blind date. But you guys haven't even let me shower today. Don't worry. Is this a new face? Deodorant. I'm putting it on my face. Mm. 
Oh, here's her blind date. Oh, hi. How's it going? Oh. Oh, well, this is nice. Who knows if restaurants of the future will have oxygen bars? But wouldn't that be fun? All around awkward. Sure, why not? It is very hot in here. Can I have water? Does anyone work here? Well, nobody can afford the rent now, so I don't know who will be able to afford the rent when there's less land. We thought that the land in San Francisco was going to shrink about 20 square miles. Now, we can measure the distance to the ground very accurately with LIDAR and with radar, flying on satellites and on aircraft. Now we know that the land can shrink up to 50 square miles. Do you work here? <laughs> as much fun as we're having with Aparna here, this is a really serious issue that's going to affect the world's poor. When climate change happens, when sea level rises, they have nowhere to go. Is this person not a real human? Is that the twist? He's not a robot. He's real. <laughs> you are definitely a robot. Why are we standing here? Let's go sit down. Oh, I'm so hungry. I just want some sustenance, anything. 76% of the world's population depend on rice, wheat, barley, and potatoes for their protein. Hey, what can I get you? Oh, thank goodness. Um, two burgers and three glasses of water and whatever he would like. Data from experiments have shown that plants grown in a higher CO2 world will have less protein. I am so excited for this food. So with decreased protein content of these crops, we're going to have a protein deficiency crisis. What the f What is this? So what you have here is a burger made out of crickets topped with some toasted superworms. As creepy as it is, in a 4C world, eating insects may be the practical thing to our protein problems, especially since animal husbandry is going to be very expensive and unpredictable. I mean... It's got a good texture. So, how did it go? Oh, I'm swiping left. I think I'm swiping left on the whole day. You know, what happened in there is based on our model projections. And the models aren't perfect. We really have no clue how citizens and governments will respond to the climate change. So we cannot wallow in our, in our sense of hopelessness. No action is very dangerous. You know, I think there's progress. The UK has actually done some pretty good work. They have been able to reduce carbon emission levels to pre-industrial revolution levels. So I think that's massive progress. How do you think data has helped overcome some climate hurdles. You know, if you think about data, data was simply just information. And we didn't have the ability to collect very large amounts of information. Today, we can not only collect very large amounts of information, we can stitch all this information together to mm -hmm. create knowledge and thus insight. So I think data is definitely a big piece of the puzzle. But along with that is what we do with the data. It was fascinating to see how scientists are able to use data to make well-founded predictions about what might happen when we're living in a 4C world. Even small changes in complex ecosystems could potentially lead to some pretty wild outcomes. But I am signing off with a degree of hope. Find out more about how data is helping the world take climate action at datamakespossible.com. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go talk to my therapist about cockroaches.